All right, thanks for watching. And today I'll define what infinity is. Essentially what infinity is, is just a symbol that's as big as you want it to be. So in other words, infinity is a symbol, again, whatever that means, such that no matter which real number I give you, it's always bigger than that real number. So, so such that for all x in R, x is less than infinity. In other words, is infinity bigger than a million? Yes. Is it bigger than a billion? Yes. It's really bigger than any possible real number. Why did I write symbol? Because it's important to understand infinity is not a real number. In particular, it does not obey the same algebraic rules that uh, it, real numbers do. For instance, we know that for all x in R, if you subtract x from x, you get 0. But this is not true for infinity. But infinity minus infinity is not always 0. That's what's called an indeterminate form, and there's a nice video on that if you're curious about that. So, again, infinity, not a real number, yet it is still useful, for instance, to extend our definition of soup to unbounded sets. So, using infinity, we can define what it means for soup of s to be infinite. So, definition. So, we say the soup of s is infinite, simply if s is not bounded from above. What does that mean? Again, just in mathematical terms, suppose you have this huge set s, maybe like this, not bounded from above means the following. If I give you any huge number m, so for all m in R, m in R, I can always find a bigger element of s. In other words, there is s1 in your set that is bigger than m. There is S1 in S, again, it's important that it's an element of S, such that S1 is strictly bigger than 1, M. So in other words, is there an element bigger than a million? Yes. Is there one bigger than a billion? Yes, as well. So for instance, an example of an un a set that's not bounded from above, it's simply the interval 3, infinity. It's like infinite from one side. And similarly, there's a definition of the inf being minus infinity, it's sort of the opposite scenario. So in other words, we say that the inf of s is minus infinity if s is not bounded from below. What does that mean, again, in terms of this scenario here? Now, consider the following set S. It means no matter which number I give you, think negative a million, you can always find some element in S that's smaller than that number. So in other words, for all little m, In R, you can always find some element in S that is smaller than M. So there is S1 in S with S1 little uh, smaller than little M. 
So is there an element less than minus a million? Yes. Is there an element less than minus a billion? Yes. So for instance, again, this set, minus infinity comma one, the infimum is minus infinity. And why is this definition nice? Because now we can just rewrite the least upper bound property in a very elegant way. So again, what does the least upper bound property say? It says if S is bounded from above, then the supremum exists. So LUB property. But now it turns out if we have this definition with infinity, we don't even need S to be bounded from above anymore. So in other words, all that it is now is that if S is a non-empty subset, the supremum exists exists that's when it's bounded from above or the supremum is infinite and again why is that true suppose s is a non-empty subset of r case one it's bounded from above therefore the supremum exists or um, it's not bounded from above, and therefore, by definition, the supremum is infinity. So, for you, if for you infinity exists, then you could just say that the supremum always exists. But strictly speaking, it either exists as a real number or the supremum is infinity. And not only that, the nice thing is, all our other properties that we've shown, they work even if the supremum uh, is in infinite. For instance, even with this extended definition of supremum, we still get that the infimum of S is minus the supremum of minus S. Again, even if S is infinite. meaning not, not bounded, let's say, from above or uh, below, you see. Um, and that's why it's a nice extension of the definition. And last but not least, let's just do one little problem with, you know, this supremum being infinite. So for instance, consider the following set. So let's find the soup of S, where S is the following sequence, so it's uh, n, n squared times minus 1 to the n, where n is a natural number. So what does this sequence look like? Notice minus 1 to the n is either minus 1 or 1, so essentially this sequence sort of travels on two parabolas, one being y equals x squared, and the other one, y equals negative x squared. And so in particular, the first point minus one is here, the second point four is here, and then minus nine, 16, minus 25, etc., etc. So in other words, S looks as follows. Again, it starts at minus one, and then it goes to four, Again, like this, and then it goes to minus 9, and then it goes to 16, and then minus 25, etc., etc. And in particular, notice S, if you want the next term here, kind of looks like it's not bounded from above. In other words, it looks like S is just blowing up to infinity. Okay, not all the terms, but at least a couple of the terms. So it might be reasonable to guess that the supremum is infinite. Okay. The supremum of S is infinite. 
So all that we need to do, again, given any number m, what we want to do, we want to find some term of the sequence that is bigger than m. So given m, find something, so find m such that, again, the term of your sequence, uh, n squared times minus 1 to the n is bigger than m. Okay, how do we do that? Well, notice the odd terms, they just go down. So those we don't really care about. It's really the even terms that we care about. And in particular, notice if n is even, I can't even, if n is even, then this term here, n squared times minus 1 to the n, just becomes n squared. And in particular, what do we want? We want this to be bigger than m. Again, it's not, it's not an inequality, it's more of like we want this to be true. So in particular, what do we need m to be? Well, we need m to be greater than square root of m. And I like to emphasize all of this is scratch work. So technically it shouldn't be part of your proof, but now we can actually prove our result. So in particular, what do we want? Two things. We want an even integer that is bigger than square root of m. So therefore we have the following. So now let uh, n be any even integer that is greater than square root of m. By the way, this holds by the Archimedean property, if you'd like. Then, what do we have? n squared times minus 1 to the n. Again, technically that is in s. Okay. becomes n squared times 1, because n is even, and that is n squared, which becomes greater than square root of m squared, which is m. So therefore, with this choice of n, we get that this term of the sequence is actually bigger than m, and therefore we have shown that uh, the supremum of s is infinity. All right, and that's all for today.